Welcome, Welcome to, to Hero, Hero Club. Club. I'm Nick Williams. And I'm George Primavera. George and I started playing Dungeons and Dragons with our buddies in college, and we haven't stopped since. Even when we lived on opposite coasts, I would Skype in George on the TV in the living room of my apartment. While I would DM from the floor of my bathroom so as not to wake up my roommate. When I finally came out to Los Angeles, we started playing with our friends right away. And when we'd inevitably tell other people about the ultimate betrayals and daring heroics that happened in our games, we realized that they were just hearing a jumbled mess instead of the cinematic blockbuster memories that were in our heads. We wanted to show people how fun and immersive immersive D&D can be, especially those who had never played. And to do that, we record a full game like normal around the table and then painstakingly cut it down from four hours to a clean, math-free episode so you can experience our memories the way we do. Just like in a real game, nothing is ever written or planned out ahead of time with the players. The only things we add are music and sound effects. I am the dungeon master. I build the world and the framework for an adventure. The players, like Nick, must then journey through the obstacles I set before them, rolling a 20-sided die and adding character-specific bonuses to see if they succeed. If they beat the number I have in my head, then their action is successful. If not, it is a failure, and there may be consequences. We try to follow the rules of Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition as close as we can, but as the Dungeon Master, what I say goes, and there are some things I like to do differently. Each season is its own contained story, so find one that sounds interesting to you and start from the top. And hey, welcome, welcome to, to the, the club. club. This week, our guest on the podcast is Benjamin Watts. Ben, is there anything you want to say to the people? Oh, I love the people. Uh, yeah. Hi, everybody. You can follow me if you're interested. I'm Benny Watts on Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> I don't really go on Twitter, but that's neither here nor there. If you go on Twitter, you could follow me. Sometimes I share stuff, but not all the time. Anyway, that's more of a personal thing. You do you, I'll do me, and we'll all be fine. Uh, also, uh, check out IGN.com, because that's where I work during the day, and I love that. And, um, yeah, thanks for having me. And now, Hero Club presents The City of Mirrors, Volume 7, Moscow. The Daily Globetrotter is proud to present this week's top scoop from across the globe. Arriving in Moscow after an eventful train ride, Theobald Derencroft and his ragtag party follow the breadcrumbs left by the mysterious letter to the location of what they hope is another golden apple. Better for some of the group than others, as we at the Globetrotter have it on good authority that Theobald's own demolitions expert, Vanya Baranov, was banished by the Tsar's advisor, Grigory Rasputin, to the desolates of Siberia several years ago. Will they find what they seek in the Russian motherland, or fall into the dastardly hands of the mad monk himself? Either way, the Daily Globetrotter will be there, so stay tuned. This week's broadcast is brought to you by Abby Ann Schneider's Classy Type Riders. Do you want to avoid the unpleasantness and drudgery of pen writing? Well, fret not, you fancy rep scallion. This high-grade writing machine will have you typing easily legible letters that will make your recipients go, Say, when did he get a job? Abby Ann Schneider's Classy Type Riders. Dignified, efficient, style and grace, now in a genuine leatherback case. Case is not actual leather, typewriter not guaranteed to make recipients think you're employed. Now, back to the program. The crew Groskoshi pulls into the station as steam billows over the platform. Attendants first disembark the train just before it halts to a complete stop. And within two or three minutes, Russian police are storming the train and bodily grabbing Detective Caltabiano, dragging him off to a fate unknown. And so, boys, come on, not that need for roughness. Or I'll have that kind. I'll have it, I swear. I'll have it! Our party finds themselves outside of the storage container as the one-armed conductor sets their belongings down on the platform. Thank you very much, Alexei. And Theobald plants another generous tip into the man's one hand. Bones hops off the train onto the platform and piles each of his compatriots' bags into his arms except for Theobald's and waits for the rest of the group. Oh, no need to break a sweat. I'll manage. Theobald huffily grabs his own trunk and addresses the group. I believe our first order of business should be to deposit our belongings at the Gilded Rose 
of top luxury. It's a hotel. It sounds better in the original Russian. Vanya paces back and forth, clearly very anxious. He fiddles with his clothes, looks at his bag, and says, The first order of business is for me to get out of this ridiculous outfit. I can't be seen like this. Not here. Come, come. Theobald sets off towards the exit of the train station. The party finally exits the train platform, ending up on the cold streets of Moscow. It's about 9 p.m., and the street is still bustling and busy. Theobald steps out into the street and holds up his walking stick, attempting to hail a carriage. Bones steps slightly in front of Theobald and hollers after a cab himself. Hey! Both of you make opposed persuasion checks. Twelve. Nine. Neither of them is able to get a carriage or even a rickshaw to stop. God damn it! Mahoney, I had it under control. You confused the cabbies. I'm sure they were confused by you waving your little stick around. You shut up! No, you shut up! All right, uh, let's keep it civil, boys. Uh, not sure what we're missing here, but um, let's just get warm, shall we? Jade walks into the street, puts two fingers in her mouth, and whistles loud. Roll a persuasion check. 24. Three carriages stop in front of Jade, backing up on each other. <laughs> well, that's more like it. Jade saunters into the first one. Vanya looks at Bones and Theobald, gives a shrug, and then walks into the carriage. <laughs> Bones throws all the luggage into that same carriage and hops in, taking the last remaining space, and then leaning out the window and saying to Theobald, Your carriage awaits, your majesty! <laughs> Fine. Theobald tips this driver and then slams the door to his own carriage. More room for me anyway, it's just how I like it. There is a goat in Theobald's carriage. Oh, hello! <laughs> well, the company in this one is far superior! And the two carriages trundle off to the gilded rows of top luxury. After about 20 minutes, both carriages halt in front of a broken down, absolute garbage pile of a building. The sign over the front door is at a funny angle, and far too many flies and maggots crawl within a dumpster just 10 feet away from the front entrance. Jade steps out and looks up. Theo, you uh, shouldn't have. Well, it's a bit more roughshod than I remember. Excuse me, my man. Theobald turns to the carriage driver, who is already trundling away. Blast. Uh, uh. Bones pushes his way through the front door, still carrying everyone but Theo's luggage. Did you mean the uh, luxury gilded rows? There are two different places. Oh my god. <laughs> Vanya slaps Theobald on the back. This place is much more our speed anyway. No more of this frilly bullshit. Well, no, Vanya, actually. Vanya jogs in. Vanya, as soon as you walk in, a man greets you in Russian. Hello, greetings. Uh, it is so wonderful to have customers. What is your name? No, no, no names. Oh, that is okay, too. Come, come, how many are you? Four of us, yes, four, yes. Four people, yes, okay, perfect. And how much livestock? Well, do you count the American? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what are you laughing about? It, it's our, <laughs> good joke. Yes, so three and one goat. Three and one goat, very good. Your room will be up the stairs on the left. Enjoy your stay at the Gilded Rose of Top Luxury. The first thing the party notices as they enter the Gilded Rose of Top Luxury is the wall-to-wall -wall red carpeting with a twisted golden pattern throughout. There are holes in the rug in sporadic places that look like they may have been torn up perhaps by a grazing goat or two. The curtains are all moth-eaten. There's a general stink in the air, the commingling of cat urine, fancy perfume, and straight-up excrement. And the stairs creak loudly on every step. The rooms are not much better. Austere wooden furniture frames four tiny little beds in this room. Reminds me of my days at the children's home. There must be some mistake. Vanya, did I not overhear you saying that we would also be paying for a goat's accommodations? And Theobald jerks his head at bones. Theo, yes, I was, I was joking with the person downstairs. It was to build rapport since you are also, you, you come in very inappropriately into another, another country. So I was, it was just a joke, Theo. Oh, pity. Wait, that was about me? You're calling me a goat? Why don't you sleep on the floor, you, you old goat? That's what I say. Jade steps in the middle of Theo and Bones. All right, enough. What the hell is going on? 
I want you to sit here and don't tell me no run-around story. I want you to tell me exactly what it is that's got you two in such a twist, or we're going to have a real problem. Us two? I'm not in such a twist. I'm doing absolutely fine. It's Mahoney here, who insists on putting his greasy mitts where they don't belong, trying to pilfer antiquities of which he has no understanding. My greasy mitts? Where I don't belong? When we signed up for this job, we were promised riches beyond our wildest imagines. And I haven't seen one red cent. Yes, at the end of the whole endeavor. That means you just get to put your dirty, limey mitts all over any monkey idol that you happen to find? Well, I never! Well, now, this really reminds me of being in a children's home. Except for that bit about the monkey. Now, um, are you talking about that little thing that, um, cute little pipsqueak researcher gave us? No, no, this is a... Totally hypothetical monkey idol, and hypothetically, Mahoney has no idea of whether that monkey idol wants to be touched by my limey mitts. Hypothetically? The good doctor doesn't even know what he's talking about when it comes to any hypothetical monkey idol. It's my hypothetical thing. Vanya takes out a bottle of vodka from his coat and smashes it on the ground. Help! Do I have your attention? You made me waste good vodka. And I have killed for less. Sit down, right now! Both of you, opposite sides of this tiny room! Bones immediately complies. As if against his will, Theobald's ass hits the bed. Now Tea Leaf asked you a question. I like it when you talk like that, Big Ram. I don't know about you, Vanya, but I think this calls for research through their luggage. You know them better than I do, at least Theo. And I'd say they're acting a bit out of sorts, wouldn't you? Vanya and Jade tear through Bones and Theobald's luggage, but do not find any such monkey idol that they might be hypothetically referring to. All right, I do not know why you are having this spat, and I do not care. This is a very sensitive place for me. It is very hard for me to be here, but we have a job to do. We have to find another one of these orbs, yes, hopefully at the end. This apartment, and none of what you are doing right now, gets us any closer. This is exactly what Rasputin... Vanya cringes at his own voice. This is exactly what Rasputin wants of us. To fight amongst ourselves. Do not give in. Bone sets his shoulders. You're right, Vanya. I will continue to be professional, and I expect Theobald to do the same. And we're gonna make it through this job, because Bones Mahoney... Gets the job done. I can put my hypothetical blind rage aside to get the job done. Yes, Vanya. Wrath is a bitter remedy for evils. It causes malady in the head, destroys fame, and is a source of sinful acts. Ugh, boring! That is the Mahabharata, you rube! Blah, blah, Read blah. A Mahabharata. Book. All right, so for the meantime, Tea Leaf, I'll take one and you take the other and we just keep them separated. Um, which one would you like? Since we're in unknown territory, I might as well take the American because, um, don't know if we're going to get into any fighting scrapes. You've got your bombs. I've got his fists. That is a good one. Um, now everyone get out of this room. I need to change. The party awaits Vanya downstairs in the hotel's lobby. During that time, Bones changes in the lobby, completely unashamed. The clerk seems completely unfazed. Bones bundles up his nice new clothes into a wad and slaps them down onto the front desk of the hotel. Watch these for me, can you, chief? The man wordlessly takes the clothes and puts them below the desk. Vanya emerges in his usual outfit. So, Theo, do you have any idea where that letter might be pointing? And d -Leaf, if Bones says anything to interrupt Theobald while he's trying to help us get forward with this mission, just slap him in the face. Capital idea. Theobald reaches into the inner pocket of the tweed suit he's changed into and pulls out the letter. Had I brought the apple with me, I could have joined you, but alas, it sits on our bedside table. If you are reading this, take my bones back to Moscow. Not much to go on. And what is his name? Well, according to the other letter from this Sophia character, this gentleman's name is Alexander. Alexander and Sophia? Are you speaking of the Yahuntovs? Everyone make a history check. Nine. Four. Sixteen. Vanya with a flash of genius that comes over him in his home country. Twenty-three. Only Vanya recognizes the name. So that's what we've been chasing, eh? Of course. 
Alexander and Sophia Yahuntov. Adventurers. When I was exiled, they were alive and well. So they must have gone missing. Well. Vanya turns and speaks in Russian to the man behind the counter. So, uh, Alexander and Sophia, I used to consult with them on jobs. Um, but I've been out of the country for a little while. Do you happen to know their address? Of course, there is a memorial out front. They have been declared dead by the Russian government. The clerk writes down the address on a piece of paper and slides it over to Vanya. Thank you very much. I'm about to make this hoity-toity British man give you some money. Also, if you pretend that his Russian is very good, Vanya rubs his fingers together to indicate more money for you, my friend. All right, thank you for the tip, so to speak. <laughs> In English, Vanya turns to Theobald. Theo, mm? tip the man. He gave us very good information. Ah, yes. Spasiba, old chap. Oh, your Russian is so good. <laughs> a man after my own heart. Theobald leaves the man a generous tip. <laughs> and the party heads off, once again attempting to hail a cab outside on the street. Vanya and Theobald hop in one carriage while Jade and Bones hop in the other, keeping the fighting pair separated. And then 15 minutes later, the group is outside in a slightly run-down neighborhood, a tall brownstone with a statue of a man and woman twirling together sits completely abandoned, the windows boarded up, and the door marked with some sort of red poster. Bones disembarks from his carriage, finishing his sentiment that he has clearly been ranting about the entire ride over. So I know he's listening, but I don't feel heard. Does that make sense? I don't know, maybe I'm just rambling. Jade mid eye roll also descends from the carriage. Theobald disembarks with Vanya from his carriage, finishing his own insane ramblings. You see, old chap, it all comes down to respect, and I do not feel respected by someone in my employ. Surely you can understand. Oh, never mind. What's this red poster say? It is indeed written in Russian. Let me see, Theo. The poster reads, This property has been condemned by the Russian government by order of Grigory Rasputin. All properties within have been taken into custody and will be analyzed and distributed to public museums in due time. Entrance is not permitted under any circumstances. Vanya, as you go up to read the poster, make an investigation check. Dirty 20. Peeking through the foggy window into the entrance of this house, you see stacks and stacks of newspapers. Additionally, you see several envelopes loosely scattered all over the floor as if they've been shoved through the now boarded up mailbox. And at your feet, not inside, is a sealed letter, dirty with footprints. But as you pick it up, the envelope is labeled, Sophia. The blood has drained from Vanya's face as he stunned picks up the letter and opens it. My love, my mission was a success. I have retrieved their apple. Though it has not opened for me as you had posited, I shall keep it in my usual safe place, until we are ready to deliberate further. I worry for you, my dear, for if you have received my letters previous and responded in kind, they have become lost and wrote. My dreams torture me nightly, as to what may have befallen you, though I know your resourcefulness and your determination would lead you even through the ends of the world. Should the Scandinavians prove a dead end, meet me at home. But should you take too long, I shall spare no expense, nor second, minute, hour. Until I see you again, my love. To paradise. Alexander. It's Rasputin. Uh, Vanya, dear, are you sure? Because sometimes you say that it's Rasputin when, when it's really not like that time when you dropped your tea sandwich the other day. Um, are you sure? Vanya slams his hand against the red notice. I know you cannot read Russian. You'll have to trust me on this. Right there, plain as day. Rasputin. Going inside will be very illegal. But maybe, just maybe, these two have a hiding place that even thwarted his tactical brilliance. I believe you're right, old man. I say we start here, and then if our search comes up empty... We might need to venture a little closer to the wolf's den. Guess that's where I come in. Jade goes to open the front door. Make a thieves tools check. 22. And the door creaks open, revealing a dark and very skinny hallway. 
Theobald pulls out his lighter and looks for an oil lamp or a wall sconce that he can transfer the flame to. There are several candles that can be lit. Theobald lights them. And the party begins to journey into the house. Everybody make an investigation check. 12. 7. Nat 20. 7. Theobald, Jade, and Bones violently turn the house over, looking for any signs of hidden object, but find absolutely nothing. Vanya, following a strange instinct that strikes him, before looking at anything on the first floor, climbs the stairs, moves into what is clearly a master bedroom, and begins to feel around the walls, until suddenly, as he is leaning up against one such wall, Vanya feels a wooden panel push inward, revealing a safe-like dial. <laughs> there has never been a wall that the ram cannot break down. Teen Leaf, we have something up here for you. On the way. Jade runs up the stairs to meet Vanya. Bones flips over another table before joining them. Uh, uh. Nope, nothing under here either. Theobald is close behind. Oh, would you look at that? Time to get to work. Jade goes up to the safe and tries to open it. Make a perception check. 22. Jade puts her ear to the wall and turns it until she hears a very faint click. Make another perception check, Jade. 15. Turns it again and almost misses the second click, but just barely stops herself. Jade, make one more perception check. 16. And the entire wall suddenly opens revealing an empty metal cube in the wall. Blast! Theobald reaches his hand in and feels the floor, walls, and ceiling of the safe. Immediately, the floor caves into Theo's push as a pressure plate is activated, and there is a hiss of steam. Theobald, make a dexterity save. With a flash of inspiration, Vanya tries to help Theobald get out of the way. Dirty 20. Theobald pulls his hand out just in time as the safe suddenly slams shut. And then, there is a low ticking. Vanya, you've always told me that when it comes to ordinance, ticking is bad. Bones easily picks up the dresser in the room and attempts to chuck it through the window. Make an athletics check. 19. Go, go, go! Jade runs to the window and flips outside of it onto the street below. Make an acrobatics check. 15. Jade lands on the cobblestone heavily, but takes no damage. Theobald dives through the window, trying to aim for a hedge or anything else that could soften his landing. Make an acrobatics check. 18. And Theobald lands bodily in a hedge, quickly standing up and putting some distance between himself and the building. Bones scoops Vanya up in one arm, charging towards the window, and jumps through. Make an acrobatics check with disadvantage. 16. Bones leaps out the window and goes to his knees hard, taking four damage, bringing him down to 71 points of health. Thanks to his efforts, Vanya is unharmed. Ah, my knees! It's always the knees! Vanya, dumbfounded, starts sprinting away. Vanya, wait! Theobald takes off after Vanya. And the building stands resolute and quiet in the night. Bones gets up shakily and dusts himself off. I, I guess it wasn't gonna blow and the house erupts into a pillar of flame and debris. So you wanna get a cab home or? Uh, yeah, my legs have seen better days for sure. Jade and Bones take a carriage back to the hotel. Meanwhile. Hey, hey, Vanya, Vanya stop. Roll opposed athletics checks. 10. 18. Vanya is soon away and into the night. Well, you're not winning any foot races, old chap. And Theobald tries to track Vanya until the Russian tires himself out. Roll a survival check. 15. The physical trail is cold, but Theo is able to follow the swiveling heads of many confused Russians as they all look after the very stout sprinting man. You can't run forever, Vanya! Vanya, while you are sprinting through the city streets, make an insight check. Four. Vanya, with no direction and his mind racing, soon begins to tire and slow. <laughs> and after a couple of minutes, Theobald walks up on his side. Vanya, I, I don't mean to be uncouth, but sometimes you can behave as madly as a magpie. Whatever's gotten into you, man? Like a switch has been flipped, Vanya grabs Theobald by the collar. And what about you, Theo? <sighs> 
What about you? You're no better than a grave robber, Theo. Putting your hand in places that do not belong. You didn't even notice. You didn't even notice the trap. They took my advice, Theo. Good on them. <coughs> yes, that was an unfortunate mistake, old man. Totally my fault. Egg on my face. But if this is spurred on by that business with the monkey idol and Mahoney, I am not backing down. The culpability is completely on that American rapscallion. He cannot be allowed to have it. It is mine. Vanya slaps Theo in the face. No! All right. I got it out of my system. Anyway, Rasputin has it. Let's go back to that shithole hotel you set us up in. Back at the hotel, it is nearing 12 midnight. Oh, hope those two are all right. I hope Vanya's all right. That old coot can do whatever he wants. All right. Now look here. Uh, Until about two days ago, you were the best of friends. And something with this monkey has got you all out of sorts. So what is it? Did he try and take it from you? It's not what he's done, Jade. It's what he's going to do. Right, right. So you think he's going to take your monkey? I don't think he's going to take the monkey. I think he's going to kill me for the monkey. Christ on a cracker. This is worse than I thought. Seems like something... Something's got you in its thrall. And I think it's that little monkey. I don't know anything about a thrall, or what that word means. What I do know is that the monkey told me that Theo's going to kill me. Aha! The monkey told you. And Theobald and Vanya stroll into the room. Miss Pickett, we've returned. Bones. Doc. Uh, Gov, not to start anything else since we've had our share of explosions tonight, but, um, just a quick question. Did, um, did the monkey tell you that Bones here was going to kill you for him? Theobald's monocled eye widely stares Bones in the face. No, he said no such thing. Yeah, Jade, I have no idea what you're talking about. What are you, crazy? Both of you roll deception checks. 21. 9. Theobald takes your inquiry in stride, but Bones clenches his jaw. Jade, roll an insight check. 18. With a flash of genius, Vanya studies Theobald's face and remembers that he mentioned the monkey earlier, and gives a look to Jade, shaking his head. Now, having lived a life of crime, I'm a much better liar than either of you two. So I know, now, that this monkey character, which I can only assume is just that little idol that was given to us by that tiny little girl, has somehow gotten into your heads and told you both that the other one's going to kill you for it, so it must possess some sort of power. Now, I hope that standing right here, you two looking at each other, you can realise that there is absolutely no logic to that. Bones, are you going to kill him? Bones hesitates for just a little bit too long before saying, Not unless he tries to kill me first. Uh, Fair enough. And Theo, unprompted, are you going to kill your employee here, Bones? Who, by the way, up until two days ago, you really liked. Theobald's eyes narrow. Well, I certainly would never kill a good man of upstanding character. Right. Sure. Can we shake on it, boys? And can we move on? We've got bigger fish to fry. Theobald, like he's about to pet a wild animal, slowly and jerkily moves his hand forward into the handshake position. Bones immediately flinches. Theobald flinches at the flinch and then recommits harder. Bones grabs Theobald's hand and squeezes it much too tightly while staring him dead in the eyes. Theobald tries to match the grip and refuses to break eye contact. I would just like to add that if either of you hurt the other one, I will kill you. Well, Vanya, sorry to rain on your parade, but you won't need to be killing anyone. My hand feels fine. All right. I'm going to, um, see if any of my contacts are still here. Things have probably changed very much in the last few years. But if anyone will know where he is, they will. Be ready. Vanya heads out of the room to go talk to the clerk downstairs. Right, monkey boys, back to your corners. Vanya gives the clerk a once-over to see if there's any identifying markings that this man might be sympathetic to the rebellion. 
Roll a perception check. 24. There's nothing on the clerk's desk, but there is, amidst several stacks of business cards from different patrons, a familiar symbol on the card of a man named Anatoly Vasily, Fixer. Underneath the name and symbol is a telegram line. Vanya takes the card and goes over to a telegram booth. To whoever this might be, and to anyone left, the ram is back in Moscow. The gilded rose of top luxury. After about two minutes, there's a response that just reads, 20 minutes out front. Vanya goes and waits outside. Exactly 20 minutes pass, and as soon as the second hand crosses the 12 for the final time, there's a whisper to Vanya's right. Psst. Vanya turns. In Russian. You need something fixed? I guess we can't start with the whole damn country, can we? <laughs> Good to see you, Vanya. Out of the shadows steps a man known only as Kozlov. It is good to see you're alive, Kozlov. And you. Risky for you to be back in town. I know. It is, um... I'm on a job. And I did not think it would bring me here. Not so soon. Well, what is it I can do for you? I am looking for information. You, uh, know of the Hunters, yes? Of course. We've been looking into their disappearance, and uh, what they were looking for. We went to their place. Ah, it's shut down. You saw the poster, yes? Yes. Kozlov starts to connect the dots. You are looking for Rasputin again. I was not trying to look for him specifically. He inserted himself into this one. Vanya, this has not gone well for you in the past. Yes, but I am not asking for me this time. All right. Anything for the ram. And Kozlov opens up a little notebook, scrawls something on a piece of paper, and hands it to Vanya. Should be there. There is security, but not the sort we are used to. What do you mean by that? I mean, they dress funny. Mm. From out of town? Uh, no. Sort of the opposite, actually. I don't want to um, have you risk any more. Um, the revolution must stay alive. And um, what I am doing is not for it, but is there anything else that I need to know? There are rumors. Not sure how much credence they have, but taken with a grain of salt, all information is good information, yes? Yes. People say that the Yahontovs had something very powerful in their possession. Over the years, they made quite a stink about the level of government interference in their work. Something tells me Rasputin has been chomping at the bit to get to these artifacts. I do not know much, but I do know it all started after the Yohantos returned from an excursion to Egypt. He believes that he is finding magical trinkets. <laughs> I would not laugh, Vanya. There have been many strange things occurring around the address I have just given you. I am not saying I believe in them all, but I would still advise caution. Although I know such words are wasted on your ears, Big Ram. Just remember this. The more power we give to him with rumors, the more power he has. With a grim look, Kozlov holds his hand out again. Good luck, comrade. I hope one day to join you again. We all hope that. If you do not hear from me again, know that I tried. Kozlov nods his head, pulls his hat lower down, and walks around the dark corner into the alley he had come from. Vanya grimly walks back inside, up the stairs, and enters the room. Have they been behaving? Much as can be expected. They're just sort of looking at each other. Well, when one finds themselves being stared at, one finds it hard to turn away. I can't help myself. It's like staring at a train wreck. You know where we're going? Yes, I am. I have an address. And, um... Theo, they should distract you from whatever is going on. In the past few years, they have said that there are rumors of strange goings on. So if you're right, it could be magic. They says it is um, guarded, but not by normal guards. I do not know what uh, they mean by this, but um, I need you both to be focused. At the mention of magic, Theobald does perk up and turn away from Bones. At the mention of interesting guards for him to punch, Bones perks up and looks away from Theo. Vanya, I quite don't know what you're talking about. 
My focus is unwavering and sharp as an axe. Onward, tally ho! And Theobald strides out the door and starts heading in the wrong direction. After Vanya wrangles the crew into a passing carriage, which takes some finding this late in the evening, the party disembarks next to the Moskva River outside of a stark gray cube of a building. Out front, there are a few barren sections where perhaps a garden would be put in, but now there are only patches of dirt. Everyone make a perception check. Four. Eleven. Eighteen. Twenty-three. Vanya is the only one to notice the two guards out front, swathed completely in black robes, their faces hidden, and their arms folded in front of them. They are unmoving. How do we want to play this? Obviously, we do not want an entire group of guards on us at once, but um, those two give me the chills, and they are well hidden. You know, I'm never one for trickery, if it can be helped, but... This might call for a, a change of wardrobe. What are you suggesting? Forgive me, Vanya. I was suggesting that two of us knock those two gentlemen unconscious and relieve them of their uniforms. Bones? Tea leaf? You're the only ones who can do this semi-quietly. Jade, why don't we each give these guys a wide berth? You go left, I'll go right. We'll meet in the middle and conk them. I'll probably use my knife instead of the conking, but, um... I'm in. Bones, Jade, make a stealth check. 17. 30. And now, both of you make either an athletics or acrobatics check. Another 17. 31. Jade wastes no effort in hopping over the fence with a flourish and landing completely silently. Meanwhile, Bones more bodily throws himself over, landing once again on both knees. Oh, goddamn the knees. Dealing him one point of damage bringing him down to 70 points of health, and both creep quietly along the outskirts of the building, passing low barred windows as they begin to move towards either side of the front entrance of this warehouse. Both of you make a perception check. 13. 18. Bones notices nothing, but Jade, on your slow trip to the front, you hear within a low chanting. Both silently creep towards the front, and see both robed guards standing in front of the door, slightly hidden behind large stone pillars that frame the doors. You see each other across the way. Bones counts down from three on his fingers, and at one, pounces on his man. And so does Jade. Both make an attack with advantage. 24. 19. Bones, two hits. 21. Jade, that is a hit. 25 damage. 19. Describe it. Bone slaps a meaty hand onto the robed figure's shoulder and whips his head back twice into the building itself, knocking him out cold. <clears throat> Jade pulls out her dagger and stabs the other robed figure in the shoulder as she puts her arm around his neck and slowly squeezes the life out of him until he falls unconscious to the ground. <clears throat> nice. Theobald and Vanya reveal themselves from their hiding place as Jade opens the gate, allowing them through. Welcome, welcome. Bones walks over with both robes, having taken them off the cultist. They're, they're still pretty clean. Bones hands Vanya the clean robe. I can still hide my flamethrower under this. And tosses the blood-soaked one at Theobald's feet. There you go, big guy. See if it fits. Yes, thank you, I'm sure. Theobald dons the blood-covered robe. So, we'll head on in. Stay close behind. Do not make yourselves known, you two. Yes, do your best to stay out of sight, if you can manage. And Theobald looks pointedly at Bones. Theobald goes through the robe's pockets and looks for a key to the front door. And finds one. Stand aside, Miss Pickett. Allow me to return the favor. Theobald unlocks the door. And reveals a barren, dusty, and ominous warehouse. The floor and walls both seem to be made out of some kind of cheap cement, and there is a stale, musty stench in the air. Now, the chanting is low and quiet, but audible enough for everyone to hear. Do you hear that, Vanya? Yes. No more talking. Let's head towards the noise. Everyone make a stealth check. 15. 25. 12. 10. The party slowly creeps deeper and deeper into the stark, 
barren warehouse until they reach a staircase that leads downward. This is clearly the source of the chanting. And now that you're a bit closer, you can all make out a chorus of voices, but they all appear to be saying something different. Everybody make a history check. 14. 18. 16. 16. Everyone but Bones begins to listen a bit more closely and you hear multiple languages being spoken. A bit of French, some Russian, some Chinese, even a bit of Arabic and Igbo. And then it all ceases. Theobald, there's an ominous presence deeper down the staircase, one that you have felt many a time when rounding the corner in an underground tomb or in a temple set into the side of a mountain. There is danger lying ahead of you. You're just not sure what form it takes. All right, everyone, keep your heads. And Theobald heads forward cautiously. The party follows him down the stairs, and there is one final set of doors. At the end of the hallway, two more robed figures stand alert. Both Jade and Bones hold around the corner, but Vanya and Theobald are spotted and approached by the two. In Russian, Vanya says, we have a problem. Come see. And both do. Everybody make an attack roll with advantage. 25. 20. 21. 18. There is a scuffling, and then four black-robed figures walk towards the door the two had been previously guarding. Check your pockets for keys like Theo did. And indeed, there are keys to the door in your pocket. Bingo! Let's go. Bones goes to unlock the door with the large key. And the door swings open to reveal a circle of robed figures, all of them with their hands outstretched to a black pyramid sitting on a pedestal in the center and standing at their head in an enormous golden throne wearing an Egyptian funerary mask is another figure holding a golden dagger aloft in one hand, another gloved hand outstretched and a thin slab of rock with some sort of inscrutable text inscribed upon it around his neck. And this fellow speaks. Get in here, you're ruining it. Quick, you stand right there. The instructions were very clear in the memo. Vanya recognizes the voice instantly. It is none other than Grigory Rasputin in King Tutankhamun's funerary mask. This becomes exceptionally clear as Rasputin removes the mask to peek at the four of you before quickly replacing it. Interestingly, Bones, Jade, and Theobald all hear English and Vanya hears Russian. Very slowly and cautiously, the party takes up an open position in the circle. Grigori stands in front of the pyramid, addressing the cloaked figures. Thank you all for being here. I appreciate all the time you're taking out. Your faith will be rewarded. Power is coming to you. We love you, Grigori. We love you. You're breathtaking back there. I know it. Please, please all take your space. Make the line. The robed figures begin to assemble into a single file line leading up to the Black Pyramidian. Theobald, trying to stay a little towards the back, also gets in line so as not to arouse suspicion. And the rest of the party follows suit. With the first follower in front of Grigori, he cuts the follower's hand, smearing the blood on the hand across the pyramid. Your power will be rewarded. The Black Pyramid begins to hum. Theobald, make a history check. 27. The Pyramidian is shaking, and as it does, a bit of dirt and grime vibrates away, revealing several symbols and Theobald recalls a book on Egyptian lore, specifically regarding the Black Pyramid of Dashur. Not much remains of the Black Pyramid of Dashur, mostly because of its poor construction that doomed the structure from the beginning. However, this pyramidian, or pyramid cap, is in pristine condition. Grigori moves to cut the next cultist's hand. Theobald bends down to Vanya, who's in front of him, and whispers, Vanya. I believe that's the cap to the Black Pyramid of Dashur. Vanya doesn't respond. I give my blood gladly, Grigori. And I take it. Another cut, and the cultist fervently smears his bloody hand along the pyramid. 
and the symbols engraved within it begin to glow. Vanya, seething with rage, begins to twitch. Now whatever you do, Vanya, old boy, do not blow our cup. Grasp your damn, you fucking dog! Eat this! Vanya pulls out his flamethrower and unleashes a torrent of fire at the line of cultists right in front of him. Vanya, roll flamethrower damage. Twelve. Completely surprised and making dexterity saves at disadvantage, every single cultist fails and takes a full blast from Vanya's flamethrower. And immediately, there are a score of smoking, burning bodies on the floor. And Rasputin is entirely alone, untouched, at the pyramid's edge. The two cultists with cuts running down their hands, flanking either side of Rasputin, <gasps> gasp and immediately look to their Sorcerer Supreme for some sort of orders. Who are you? To answer Grigori's question, Vanya pulls off his hood. Remember me, you son of a bitch? Not really. This is the most devastating thing Rasputin could possibly say to Vanya. Stop lying! Bones, Miss Pickett, three times Vanya has been married, and three times he's been made to play the part of the cuckold by that charlatan there! You monster! Honestly, nothing comes to mind. I sleep with so many women. What is your name? I'm Roy Bones Mahoney. What's your name, bucko? Not you, you idiot. I mean, I'm happy to introduce myself if you do not know who I am. I have no idea. Well, I am Grigory Rasputin. Everybody else seems to know who I am. Maybe they can educate you later. Oh, you're the guy that Vanya keeps yelling about. Vanya. Vanya. Nope, nothing coming to mind. But you have interrupted a very important night. So, I must kill you. And Rasputin ungloves his left hand, revealing a shriveled, black, gnarled limb. He raises it to the sky. I invoke the Terracotta. And two massive stone guards drop from the ceiling. Rasputin, talking in a layered voice, addresses Jade. Stab Vanya in the back. Jade, make a wisdom save. With a flash of genius, Vanya just says, do not fall for his charms. 22. For a moment, you feel an urge to stab Vanya in the back come over you. But shaking your head as Vanya shouts out to you, you steal yourself and resist. Oh, oh, you almost got me. I feel violated. And Rasputin backs up behind his stone guards. Theobald turns to Vanya. Still don't believe in magic, old boy? And opens fire with his revolver on Grigori Rasputin. 25 to hit. Another 25. Two hits, roll damage. 27 damage. And then Theobald, using his guerrilla tactics, is going to relocate and hide as a bonus action. Make a stealth check. Eight. Theobald quickly realizes there is nowhere to hide in this room and is unable to do so. I've been saving these ones for you. Vanya takes out a large parcel of bombs that you've seen before, but they are tied together to make a much larger explosive, and he hurls it so it lands in between the stone creatures and Rasputin. This should shatter them! 22 points of damage. One of the cultists scatters across the room, while the other is thrown five feet back and gashed across the face. Both of the stone figures also rock with the blast. Rasputin, seeing this coming, braces himself and absorbs some of the blast with a vibration of magical energy in front of him, only taking half damage. And then Vanya unleashes another torrent of flame from his flamethrower. 18 points. Both stone figures take a full blast. The last cultist, holding a wicked looking dagger and charging Vanya, is completely engulfed and killed immediately. But Rasputin swirls his gnarled, shriveled hand in a circle, and some of the fire begins to suck inward into the palm. Rasputin glows with a fiery red energy bordering his outline and has absorbed the elements that Vanya has thrown at him. And then the two stone men lumber forward to retaliate. Both of their eyes glow a bright purple. Vanya, make two wisdom saves. 19. Success. 16. 
failure. The combined power of both golems' magic slows Vanya in place. Vanya seems to be moving at some kind of half speed. Jade pulls out her grapple gun and shoots it at the eye of one of the stone guards, attempting to get onto his body. 17. The grappling hook fires, wraps around the creature's neck, and Jade runs forward, jumping and landing on the creature's shoulders. Jade pulls out the dagger from her boot and tries to stick it in the eye of the stone guard. Roll an attack. 18. Hit. 28. The dagger immediately pierces one of the stone golem's glowing eyes. However, the stone surface seems quite resistant to the dagger's blade. Bones shucks his giant cloak and charges the golem not being ridden by Jade. He throws a right hook and a left cross. 15. Miss. 8. Miss. He shakes it off and throws two more punches. 26. 24. Two hits. 20 damage. Initially meeting hard stone to no avail, Bones does a sort of boxer's dance around the golem, looking for weak points, and then targets those with two more hooks. And Powdered Stone blasts off the creature like old sheetrock. Rasputin, with his dark black hand, pulls back and unleashes an enormous blast right at Vanya. Vanya, you take 18 damage as crackling eldritch energy courses through your body. Bringing him down to 57 points of health. How does that feel, you odd little cut man? Then Rasputin, with a layered voice targeting Vanya, says, Eat your own fire. Vanya, roll a wisdom save. 19. Vanya feels Rasputin's influence crawl into his ear, and then through sheer force of will, rejects it. <sighs> Why? Your wives were not this resistant. Theobald moves 30 feet, then fires a shot with his revolver at Rasputin. 16. Miss Rasputin dodges out of the way by simply leaning backward. Hit, damn. Theobald fires again. 14. And another miss. This time, Rasputin staring Theobald down as he ducks under the bullet. You old British man. Vanya moving slow as molasses takes out another bundle of explosives and slowly rolls it between the stone guard's legs. Jade is also in the blast and will also make a constitution save. One of the golems takes a full blast while the other swivels only taking half of the damage. Jade? 18. Jade, atop the swiveling golem, also only takes half. 14 points of thunder damage. Jade takes seven points of damage bringing her down to 44 points of health. Vanya, make your save to resist the slowing effect. Eight. Vanya remains magically hampered, and the stone men retaliate viciously, both making two slamming attacks with their stone fists. One directed at Jade, the other directed at Bones. One stone fist punches upward, slamming into the side of Jade's head. Ah! She takes 24 damage. But Jade uncannily dodges it to only take half the damage, flinging herself upward and holding on to one of the beams above them. Jade is brought to 32 points of health. And then the second fist connects into her ribs. She takes 17 more points of damage, bringing her down to 15 points of health. Ah! <sighs> the other golem then tries to savage bones. The first attack deals 23 points of damage fracturing two of Bones' ribs. And the second attack, a nat 20 from the stone golem, deals 43 points of damage as Bones takes a hit directly in the sternum. Throwing up his arms at the last second in defense, Bones is going to shave off 18 points of that damage, mitigating some of the brunt of the hit. Bones is brought down to 22 points of health. <laughs> Jade flings her dagger right at Rasputin's gnarled hand. Jade will make an attack at a minus five penalty for a called shot. 18. The dagger flies towards Rasputin, but suddenly impacts on an invisible force one foot in front of him as a magical barrier knocks the dagger to the floor. Jade shores up her defenses and takes the dodge action. Bones digs deep and gains resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage, shaking off 
the massive hits that rocked him moments before and squares back up with the golem, throwing four punches. 23, 22, 11, 13. Two total hits. Bones deals 19 damage as he rocks those weak points again. You could have been part of making this country great, but you followed this fool. Rasputin casts an enormous blast right at Theobald. Theobald just barely ducks out of the way out of a vicious bolt of crackling energy that passes over his left shoulder. Rasputin turning to Vanya, speaking in another multi-toned command. Share your fire with your friends. Make a wisdom save. 24. Fuck you! No, fuck you! Theobald, make a perception check. 10. Theobald, there are several chests all around the corners of this room. All told, you count five. One of them happens to be right next to you, but the other four are sort of scattered throughout the entire room, and all of them are labeled with signs in Russian that read, do not touch, for Rasputin's eyes only. Theobald looks down his sights, seeing that Rasputin is perfectly lined up, and then back at the chest. Oh, what the hell? And throws it open. Make an athletics check. Four. The chest is locked and does not move when Theobald budges it. Perhaps he's right. I am a fool. Theobald lines Rasputin up again and takes another shot. Dirty 20 and fires again. 25. Two hits. Roll your damage. 21. Theobald aims right at Rasputin's center mass and pulls the trigger three times, hearing a click the third time. (laughs) Blast. Vanya takes out his Scorching Ray Cherry Bombs and throws them at the goal. Nat 20. 30 points of fire damage. Vanya sees that it hasn't gone down yet and throws the last bomb at the same golem. 26. 16. Describe it. The small bombs each get lodged into different parts of the golem's stone body and then explode outward, shattering the entire golem. As the figure crumbles to the ground, the slowing effect on Vanya's body also ceases. The one remaining stone golem, however, moves forward to punish Vanya. It makes two attacks. As the frantic, swiveling golem whirls around to punch Vanya through the head, the first fist goes a little high, and the second twists the golem around so far that its entire top half spins around on its legs, and the golem is now stunned. Seeing the golem in his weakened state, Jade drops back down on it and attempts to stab the weak points. 17. Hit. Roll damage. 25. Ah, Bones charges Rasputin and attempts to punch him four times. 23. Hit. Nat 20. Hit. 22. Hit. 22. And one more. 23. 55 damage. Describe it. Bone spears Rasputin through the middle and into the throne before going to town on his face with both fists. Get over here, you son of a bitch! You pathetic bony man. I will Ah! have And Rasputin's nose bone is punched into his brain. The stone golem immediately deactivates and goes dormant. Vanya, unrelenting, walks up to the throne. Move, Bones. Good work. Bones steps back and gives Vanya space. Rasputin's twitching body still sits in the throne. Vanya unleashes a torrent of fire from his flamethrower onto Rasputin's body. The more delicate ornamentations of the throne melt over Rasputin, hardening once the torrent of fire ceases, and his body lies burned disfigured and still. (laughs) I'm taking back my country, you son of a bitch. Jade jumps off the unmoving golem, walks over to Vanya and pats him on the back. You feel better now? Yes. Magic is real. So it is. So it is. Yes, old man, what did I tell you? Scattered within Rasputin's remains are his previous artifacts that he had been wielding. A golden dagger, 
King Tut's funerary mask, and a beaded necklace at the end of which is a stone with script written into it. Jade takes the dagger and puts it in her belt. She then walks over to the chests and starts trying to unlock them. None of them are restrained to the point where Jade has very much difficulty at all, and Jade reveals, kicking each trunk open, various different artifacts, most of which look rather ordinary. In two of the crates, you simply find a great deal of money and a couple of gems. These modest riches easily fit in any bags that the party decides to stuff them into. The other three crates, however, reveal several more interesting looking artifacts. The first is a one foot long stone carving of a bull. The second, a very ancient and old looking gear with script written along the outside of it. And the third is a round object wrapped in a kind of thick paper. And as soon as Jade carefully unfurls it, she reveals one of Edun's apples, golden, pristine, and worn to the touch. Hello, hello. So, um, we're taking everything, right? Especially this money. Oh, without a doubt, Miss Pickett. Let's bag this up. Vanya takes off the necklace and puts it on. This is so I remember you, you son of a bitch. Theobald, make a history check. 26. Theobald, quickly looking at the pendant around Vanya's neck, you immediately identify. This is a piece of the Rosetta Stone. By Ulla's bow, Vanya. Do you know what that is right there? That is a fragment of the Rosetta Stone. If my research is to be believed, whilst wearing that necklace, you'll be able to understand all people, regardless of language, and they shall be able to understand you as well. What else have we got? Bones piles the rest of the artifacts into one of the chests and hoists it into his arms. Oh, finally pulling your weight, I see. Let's all go find Nickelback. The party exits the dark warehouse basement, ascending the stairs and leaving the smoldering bodies surrounded by the dark black pyramid within. As soon as our party reaches the streets of Moscow, they make for a telegraph booth and Theobald steps inside to send word to Nickelback to come and get them. But meanwhile, back in the warehouse, in the basement, the dark black pyramid begins to pulse with a golden ominous glow and the charred stain of a man that used to be Rasputin begins to shake and inflate and bubble and reform until the man himself is sitting in the throne, naked as the day he was born, with a grimace of rage on his face. This ends when your torched bodies are the building blocks of my new homeland. You will taste my vengeance, Bones Mahoney. This has been a Hero Club production, produced by Nick Williams, George Primavera, and Jack Quaid, with associate producers Marty Abby Schneider and Dylan McCullum. Voice acting by George Primavera, Nick Williams, Marty Abby Schneider, Dylan McCullum, Lelia Symington, Benjamin Watts, Scott Michael Foster, and Jack Quaid. The City of Mirrors Overture, composed and produced by Matthew McCullum. Special thanks to Kevin McLeod, Ben Doyle, and Matthew McCullum for their amazing music, Mage Hand Press for their genius D&D 5th edition homebrew, Marty Abbey Schneider for his incredible artwork, and Ali Cantonese, our hero. Follow us on Instagram at Hero Club Podcast, on Twitter at Hero Club Pod, on Twitch at twitch.tv slash hero underscore club, and check out our website, heroclubpodcast.com. Thanks for listening, and welcome to the club. Bone, bone. <laughs> <laughs>
Ken Bone. Bo- <laughs> Bone Thugs and Harmony goes to unlock the door with the large key.